Rub up your engines! Today I'm gonna tell you why buying a 65 Mustang GT may be a better idea than buying even a new one. It's got that 289 Ford V8 engine. And even though it's a V8, look at the working room. There's all kinds of working room on this thing. You check out a modern Mustang, there's no working room. You can barely get your hand between the engine and the side of the fenders. That thing's in there tight. These. There's all kinds of room. And even though this vehicle is 55 years old, this thing's got a worn out ignition switch. No surprise after all these years. I made one phone call, auto parts store. They had one in stock. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to have to order it. No, it's even in stock. Back in the days, cars are simpler. They shared many similar parts. So a classic like this Mustang, a lot of auto parts stores will have parts in stock for them because they'll fit so many of the classic cars that their customers are either fixing up or they check to see if parts are available and they find like, whoa, all kinds of parts are available at <laughs> very reasonable prices too. And the advantage of these older cars are you can modify them to your heart's content. It's not all the computer crap you have to deal with. Look at this. This was modernized with the modern air conditioning system. The guy did a really good job. The lines even came through a regular line. They didn't drill any holes. So, you can put modern conveniences on these things. Not that expensive. You can modify performance. Look at this. This isn't the stock carburetor. The stock carburetors weren't all that great. But a modern Edelbrock like this, that's what I always tell people to put on them. Very good carburetors. They're brand new. They have four bolts that hold them on. You can easily do these modifications yourself. And here's something you don't see every day. This even has a hand choke on it. And speaking of transmissions, this is the GT. This now has a five-speed standard transmission on it. The stock transmission was a three-speed standard, and they had an option of a four-speed standard. This is an aftermarket five-speed standard. Works great. You get a little more oomph, because realize, this is a 289. It's only 289 cubic inches. So it puts out 210 horsepower which was a lot back in the day in 65. But today, of course, that's peanut horsepower. A stock 2020 Fastback, it puts out 460. You can bump up a lot, but the stock one puts out 460. But it starts at $36,000. This thing started at $2,400. And even with inflation taken into account from 65, that's less than $18,000 of current money. These things were a real bargain in their days. And even today, these things can be a bargain if you use your head and think, I'm not a fanatic. I'm not one of these original matching numbers guy where everything's got to match. Because this modern air conditioning conversion kit works better than the old one. The more modern five-speed standard transmission works better than the original one. So it can actually be more dependable at less cost. A true classic that turns heads a 65 mustang 55 years later it's still turning heads still running good now you look at a modern mustang 55 years from now i truly doubt that there's going to be that many of them still doing good because of the use of plastic all the cheap plastic parts are going to crack and break chrome plated door handles real chrome not plastic that's chrome plated metal that's chrome plated all the classic look on the pony car and chrome you can't buy this in a modern car you just don't make them that way anymore if you get one of these and take care of it hey the value either stays the same or generally appreciates over time where you buy a new hopped up one for 40, 45 grand or more, its value starts dropping right away. Now sure, they made a whole bunch of these things back in 65. They sold almost half a million Mustangs in 65. But in those days, people didn't think about getting a car and keeping it in a box and not driving it so its value appreciates. A lot of them were wrapped around trees. A lot of them rotted out. They're real prone to rust. That's why if you buy a used one, you want to check them good to see if the frame is solid. But in those days, people drove them, they wrecked them or they wore them out, and they junked them and then got another car. They weren't thinking about, hey, 50 years down the line, this thing might be worth a lot of money. I know a guy ran an auto parts store. He bought a whole fleet of these things for delivering auto parts to garages because they were so cheap. And he told me the other day, I said, oh man, I wish I would have kept that fleet of them. They'd be worth a fortune today. And as I said, since they're so popular and a lot of the parts of the older Fords 
are interchangeable, you can get parts for these things no problem at all. And they're not all that expensive. As long as you're not going to original equipment stuff where you want to keep it all original, then the sky's the limit on how much money you're going to spend. And yeah, this isn't the original paint job. It's been painted over God knows how many times. And like I said, you can modify them like you want. Take this old one. It's still got plain old brakes. There's no power booster here. But you can add that on if you want. This thing's already been modified so much. It's not original all matching, so just like the radiator. It's got a swanky, all metal, fancy aluminum radiator. Dissipates heat better. If there's one thing the early Mustangs had problems with is if you had air conditioning on it and you lived here in Texas in a hot Texas sun, you're driving stop and go traffic, it's 100 degrees outside, they had a tendency of overheating. So now you know the truth about why the 65 Mustang might be a better deal than a new one. It's going to turn more heads and it definitely is not going to lose depreciation the next five, ten years like a new one would. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.